Hi, happy Tuesday. I hope yours is better than mine was. I thought I'd tell you a couple of little stories. Back in the olden days when I was young, I worked in the hearing aid industry in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is, as a matter of fact, the hearing aid capital of the world. Well, three little stories from the olden days. First of all, one of the guys that worked in the department had been a truck driver in his previous life, but he'd been injured and could no longer do that. So he got through this state um, rehab department or whatever, free training, which meant that the state paid half his wages and we paid the other half so that he could learn how to repair hearing aids. It turned out to be quite good. But as he told his friends what he did for a living, they would ask funny questions. And so he told them that a lot of times the hearing aids came in and they had a lot of earwax on them. It was pretty grody, as a matter of fact. But they said, well, what do you do with this? Bob was a funny guy. He said, we make candles. Yeah, right. Pew. So then another time at another hearing aid place, the guys liked to tell a story about a hearing aid that came in for repair that was so gross. All the pieces and parts were in a Ziploc bag sealed up. When they opened it, it was very clear that this hearing aid had been someplace unpleasant. So they opened up the letter that came with it and it said that the man's dog had eaten it. When hearing aids aren't being worn but they're turned on, they emit a high-pitched squeal that's painful to dogs. And so dogs will often eat them as a kind of a way to shut it up. So the dog ate his hearing aid and the man followed it around for three days until the hearing aid came back out did not wipe it off, did not clean it in any way, put it in a bag, sent it to the repair company and said fix it. Well those guys left that thing on the shelf as long as they could and when they finally got busted and were told you must repair this hearing aid, they <clears throat> forced themselves with the use of tweezers to fix it without touching it laid it on a clean surface, a tissue or something, ran the tests on it, and sent it back to the man uncleaned. And never heard a complaint. <laughs> I can't imagine doing such a thing. And then the third one that I have always just, I don't know why, but it makes me laugh. This man got in trouble with his wife, and he had the kind that's worn inside the ear, completely invisible. Nowadays, they're really tiny, like this, this big. But in those days, it filled this part of your ear. And we thought that was really small technology. You remember, this is back in the very early 80s. So anyway, the man got in trouble with his wife. And she whacked him upside the head with a broom handle, smashing the plastic pieces into the tissue of his ear. And so again, in a Ziploc bag, here came the pieces and parts all broken and bloodied and he thought we could fix that. <laughs> yeah, well. Anyway, so that's that's the stories about Hearing Aid World in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I hope they made you laugh. <laughs>